So let's do a couple of uh, examples. One um, example just to kind of remind you of some trig identity and another one uh, in order to show that a non-separable differential equation can be transformed into a separable differential equation. So let's say we have this one first. The sine of 2x plus y prime times, uh, sorry, maybe minus no, let's say plus y prime times the cosine of 3x equals 0 with, let's say that y evaluated at pi over 2 is equal to pi over 3. Okay, so immediately, this isn't in the like general format of a separable differential equation, but we can put it in that format pretty easily. Oh, and I realized this should have been cosine of 3y. Okay, so let's see. We can say y prime times cosine of 3y is equal to minus sine of 2x. That would be maybe like one thing to do. Then we could take this y prime and replace it with dy by dx and separate the dy by dx. I mean, this is like, I think I probably said in the video, this is like kind of a sketchy way to do it, but we can motivate it why it works by doing like a, substitution with integration you yeah, yeah yeah but it can be with a substitution for integration which makes it like a little bit less sketchy okay so let's see that will give us something like this we'll have the cosine of 3y dy is equal to minus sine of 2x dx and now we can simply like take the antiderivative of both sides so we'll take the antiderivative of both sides. What's the antiderivative of the cosine of 3y? So it's sine of 3y, but not times 3. That would be if we were taking the derivative. Oh. It comes out and multiplies. Yep. So a third. And then uh, what's the antiderivative of negative sine 2x? Good. One half cosine of 2x plus a constant c. We got to put the constant somewhere, right? We might as well put it on the x part. It doesn't really matter. Okay. So now let's maybe evaluate this at x equals pi over 2 and y equals pi over 3. That's how we should read that initial condition up there. Notice that uh, we could solve for y by using an inverse trig function at this moment, but I think it's a little bit better to hold off because uh, the calculation for the initial condition is a little bit simpler if we hold off. Okay, so if we plug in y equals pi over 3, that's going to give us a third times the sine of pi equals, plugging in uh, x equals pi over 2, we get a half cosine of pi plus a constant. But these are like semi-well-known values of cosine and sine. What's sine of pi? One. Zero. Um. Sine of any whole number times pi is zero. And then um, this is going to be a half times, what's the cosine of pi? One. Negative one. I'll get it one day. <laughs> yeah, so that means c is a half. And now, uh, you know, there's like some sort of philosophical question at this point, right? Like, um, do we just kind of stop right here with one third sine of three at three y equals a half times cosine of two x plus a half? Do we stop there, or do we solve for y? Like. I think in this case we can solve for y, although, as we'll see later, especially when we do these things called exact differential equations, often we leave our solution in implicit form. In other words, we don't solve for y in terms of x because sometimes it's not possible to do that. But in this case we can, and I think it's even made a little bit easier by simplifying the right-hand side using a trig identity. So, 
Does anyone have an idea of a trig identity that would simplify the right hand side? It's, uh, I don't know, obscure ish. It's the cosine squared. This is equal to cosine squared of x. Yeah. So if you took a calculus. 2 class, which I guess everyone did. If you took calculus 2 class, there's this part where you're doing integrals of even powers of trig functions, and then there's this power reducing formula for sine and cosine, and this is the power reducing formula for cosine. And now um, we can kind of finish this whole thing off, and uh, after moving stuff around, we'll have, let's see, it'll be something like this, y equals a third, and then arc sine of 3 times the cosine squared of x. That's what you get when all is said and done with moving things around. Okay. It was part of the identity. Okay. Yeah, yeah, the, the, oh, yeah, the, oh, we solved for c to be a half. Yeah, okay. yeah, yeah. And then the power reducing formula is this. It like gives you an extra half. Okay. Yeah, that's the power reducing formula. Do we need to be able to remember the No, 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 no. You should um you should have a vague uh, uh, memory that they exist to the point where you could look them up if you needed to. Okay. Yeah. So this is one of the things we could look up, right? Exactly. Okay. Exactly. And this is like one of those where this one it would be just as correct without doing the simplification, but you could foresee some sort of like extension to this problem where it might be a lot better to do the simplification. Okay. Yeah. 